AMD makes some bold claims about potentially moving over to a competing technology. There's a new GPU in town as it finally tapes out, and we find out that the GPU in the Mac Pro destroys everything in its wake. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I could find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And I just wanna take a moment before we get into the hottest of the tech news. Let's just wanted to thank you for the fact that we hit 69,000 nice. subscribers yesterday after uploading our 420th video. You cannot plan an event like that, but thank you all so much for just what is a monumental time. Obviously, we're hoping to hit 100,000 so that we can get the silver play button, but I do appreciate the support 69,000 nice. views is nothing to sneeze at. Nice. But let's talk about some bold claims being made by AMD's CFO when he was on stage talking to the Deutsche Telekom conference about how they might consider just transitioning away from x86 if that's what business requirements end up becoming with a transition to ARM being something that they would consider. And that's an area for their focus on investment for them, saying that we know compute really well, even ARM as you referenced. We have a very good relationship with ARM for now until NVIDIA buys them out. And we understand that our customers wanna work with us with that particular product to deliver solutions. We stand ready to go ahead and do that even though it's not x86, although we believe x86 is a dominant strength in that area. This is pretty intriguing considering that it does look like more and more chip makers are moving that way. Obviously you have the example of Apple Silicon, which is actually able to find a lot more success in the ARM ecosystem versus x86. Intel's pursuing Risk v AMD might be pursuing ARM. NVIDIA's trying to buy up ARM. There seems to be an arms race, no pun intended, for different instruction sets and moving towards a future with technology that's a bit more varied and not locked down by Intel's licensing on x86, even though AMD so graciously gives them x64 licensure. It could mean a really intriguing future moving forward. What do you think of AMD's transition to ARM? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm gonna let you know about today's episode sponsor, Butcher Box, my friends. They bring you meat, high quality meat, straight to your door, okay? 100% grass-fed beef, free range organic chicken, pork Race crate free and wild caught seafood, and it's affordable, coming in at under six dollars a meal. With again, everything packaged and portioned directly for your needs, you can select from their website. I've been using this for months now, probably a year over a year at this point. I don't even remember when we started. What year is it? I don't even know. But Butcher Box is now having a promotion. When you click our link that's in the video description, you can sign up and you'll get free ground beef for life two pounds of ground beef in every Butcher Box that you get for the lifetime of your membership as long as you don't cancel and re-sign up or anything like that. We've been using it for a long time. I'd highly suggest that you check it out in case you're interested in number one, not shopping as much at the grocery store or number two, getting higher quality meat for lower prices. You can check it out at the link in the video description. And it looks like we're gonna be checking out new GPUs that are hopping onto the market. China's getting a brand new JM9 GPU that's been officially taped out. It originally was supposed to be taped out at the end of 2020, but we all know how 2020 went. So a few delays, but now as of September 14th, they're does appear to be a new GPU competitor entering the Chinese arena. It's gonna have two different versions. One's gonna compete with the GTX 1050 as far as total compute performance. And then the second one's supposed to compete with the GTX 1080 with PCI Express 4.0, 16 gigs of HBM memory. And this is just based on pure teraflops performance. It's not going to be a gaming GPU considering it won't support DirectX or Vulkan APIs, but it does open up new options for people to choose new things in the Chinese market that are being made domestically there. No new gaming GPUs for you. This is not gonna help the overall gaming market. It's just an interesting little bit of news, okay? And also here's another little interesting bit of news. It looks like Seagate might start launching 500 gigabyte SSDs for the Xbox Series X expansion cards with this popping up over in France at the price of 155 euros, which is still really steep for 500 gig. This obviously would be more compatible with something like the Xbox Series S, which only has 512 gigs to begin with. You pop in the card for an extra $155. That puts you at 455 for one terabyte of storage as opposed to the current setup where it'll put you at 515 for one terabyte of storage, whereas the Xbox Series X cost 500 and you get one terabyte of storage. It's a little ridiculous. I know people will say, but you can't get the consoles. You can absolutely get the Xbox consoles if you like, even quarter asset, all right? I've been able to find them on sale on like Amazon and Walmart and Best Buy multiple times. I haven't purchased them because I'm not gonna scalp them, but it's very actually really simple. If you're just following the right people on Twitter or you're following anything that tells you when stock comes in, you can get an Xbox if you really tried. The problem is nobody wants Xboxes. They want PlayStations and Samsung's announcing plans to come out with the heat sink that's compatible 
available with the PS5 or their 980 Pro SSD later this year. Currently, the 980 Pro doesn't have a heatsink attached with it. You'd have to attach an extra one to it in case you wanted to use it on the PS5. However, in my testing, I haven't found that that's really necessary. But in case you want to watch the journey that I've had with getting SSDs to work on the PS5, you should totally go check out the latest video over on UFD Tech. It's, I got a PCI Express card to work on the PS5. It's amazing. But Sony doesn't want everybody to be selling their own drives. They want to sell their own drives and make those profit margins too. And they're going to release it under their subsidiary subsidiary area area next storage is the brand that's going to have it one and two terabyte models of this with coming in at speeds of 7300 and 6900 megabytes per second for read and write throughput on the two terabyte model and various different terabytes written on each of those but there's no price there's no release date but sony's getting in on the ssd game themselves because they again don't want everybody else making the money but ikea wants to make all the money with asus from from gamers okay because they're finally launching the asus rog ikea collaboration which has has already launched in China, but is now coming to the US and UK. October 1st, they've collaborated on several different collections of gaming furniture, six different product lines that they're going to have, including things like an adjustable gaming desk or even a mouse pad with just extra textures. Or they're taking something like their pegboard and then adding like aggressive Asus lines that indicate you're a radical gamer. And it's gonna cost $3 more than the previous one, but that's small price to pay for victory. And how, how much price you gonna pay for Bitcoin? I don't know. Let's get the crypto stocks. Bitcoin down slightly 1.24%. It's ping ponging all over the place today. It's down and then it's up. It's hot. Then it's cold. It's yes. Then it's no. Sitting at 47,409 as of the time of recording. Ethereum also down ever so slightly. Also having a very ping pong personality day down 0.2% to be at 3546. Dogecoin not having as much of a ping pong day, just more of a decrease down 3.43% on the day. GameStop meme stonks up 0.9% on the day to close at 206.37. AMC down roughly 2% to close at 46.04. I don't know if this news has anything to do with it, but AMC did announce that they are looking to accept more cryptocurrencies besides Bitcoin for purchasing movie tickets with them. Also going to be expanding to Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Bitcoin cash purchasing when it comes to buying your movie tickets at their theaters. And did you know that Bitcoin only exists on the internet? There's no such thing as a physical Bitcoin. Did you know that internet is real? Good segue, Brett. Project Terra is Alphabet's latest laser-based internet solution that they launched in both the Republic of Congo as well as in the DRC, and they were able to transmit over 700 terabytes of data over five kilometers using this laser-based internet solution where they operated for 20 days and had a signal availability level of 99.9%. .9%. Actually kind of cool, used some of the technology from the previous Project Loon setup, and now they're actually able to beam internet across. Obviously, this wouldn't necessarily work perfectly well when it comes to adverse weather conditions. But I will say one of the things that was best about living in Africa in general is that we had far fewer like natural disasters. Not worried about hurricanes, hardly worried about earthquakes. Like they happen, but not at least in South Africa, like they were tiny and usually because of mining. Just got worried about a hippo coming across in your sleep, chomping to death. Look out, I think Moto Moto like you. I'm gonna eat you. But you can capture it in glorious 5.3K 60 FPS with the new GoPro Hero 10 Black. You wanna get inside that hippo's mouth? This is the perfect camera to do that, my friends. GoPro announcing their latest iteration in the Hero lineup. The Hero 10 can do a lot, 4K 120, 2.7K 240 versus the GoPro Hero 9s that could only do 240 frames per second in a paltry 1080p, absolutely disgusting. It's running on a GoPro's GP2 processor and they introduced a new thing that is the GoPro subscription, which allows you to upload your video footage to the cloud while you're like recording it and it's $5 a month or $50 a year. But if you end up subscribing, then you get $100 off the new GoPro price, which is $4.99. So it knocks it down to $3.99, which is the same price as the current Hero 9 Black. But if you also get the subscription, you get $50 off of the Hero 9 Black. You can see here Year, how they're doing it. So I guess they're anticipating that people are going to forget to unsubscribe over two years and that's how they earn back this profit. But the hero lineup continuously getting more expensive, whether or not it's worth it, 
I'm not entirely sure. What do you think of the new Hero 10 Black? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. And you're not gonna hear anything from GM about the Bolt EV for a little bit, besides the fact that they're delaying its restart up. They had to shut it down because they were exploding and uh, they recalled all of them and had to stop production because batteries were catching on fire. And they were originally supposed to start shipping back out next week on September 24th, but now mid-October, they haven't really said why. Just you can't get your Bolt. But Ford's having the opposite thing with their F-150 Lightning production. And they're finding that demand is outstripping what they initially invested. So they're throwing in an extra $250 million investment, an extra 450 jobs that should help them build 80,000 lightning trucks per year, even though they have 150,000 reservations sitting right now. It's not quite the Cybertruck's 1 million reservations, but the Ford F-150 Lightning does appear to be intriguing. I do like Ford's strategy when it comes to their electric vehicles. They've kind of under-promised and over-delivered. The Mustang Mach-E does seem to be a really solid car, even if they're not making a whole heckin' lot of them but I'm excited for it. And I'm also excited for the Lucid Air because it's the first car to have over 500 miles EPA estimated range, 520 miles, which is more than the long range Tesla Model S that just got refreshed. However, take this with a grain of salt. That's not necessarily the exact amount of range that you're going to get on these vehicles. And you're likely not ever gonna see this car because it's $170,000 to start in order to get all of that. At least for the Dream Edition, there's gonna be a base edition that's gonna be like $80,000. So you might see those on the road unless you live in a really fancy area. But for $170,000, personally, for me, I wouldn't want that 520 miles of range. I'd rather have the Tesla Model S plied zero to 60 in roughly two seconds. That's that's kind of more what I would want, and I'd take 300 miles of range for that compromise. But in case you're on a Mac Pro, you don't have to compromise when it comes to graphics anymore. We reported previously that Apple and AMD had brought out a dual Navi GPU that's gonna be on it, the W6800X Duo, which is a dual RDNA 2 card, has now been benchmarked and oh boy, does it just slap the crap out of Nvidia and AMD's previous cards, just 14% faster than the RTX A6000 in benchmarks such as Octane. You can see here that the W6800X Duo just completely annihilating the RX 6900 XT as well as previous iterations of AMD's GPUs and things and such as DaVinci Resolve where higher numbers are better, getting 60 FPS in the 1080p benchmark, getting 18 FPS in the 4K benchmark Mark, but beating out again every other GPU that AMD has previously offered. Pawn 4K temporal kind of uh, making the two duo GPUs equivalent. And then you have the Vega 2 duo beating it in 8K, but the new Navi 2 GPU dual one setting up to be a great performer on the Mac Pro as long as you have like $85,000 that you just want to throw money away on, on an ecosystem that Apple's going to eventually abandon because they're going to switch it over to Apple Silicon. Be my guess, you're going to get a really fast card. And I need to go fast because it's the end of this episode of Hot News. It's roughly 5 p.m. I'm filming early because I have a whole bunch of stuff to do tonight. Anyways, you should go watch yesterday's episode of Hot News where we talked about some huge performance gains AMD has made in their driver setups. And I'll see you tomorrow for This Week in News here on Hot News. Cheerios.